Well, we have been pioneers over the last 30 years. It was tough in the beginning. Uh, industry wasn't doing very well. It was just after the strikes so of the uh, 1970s. So there we were. I was here given a chair and a table to get on with it because there was no money around. Okay? But I think one of the purposes of uh, being here, and at that time the Vice Chancellor thought this university should be a facing outwards, not facing inwards. And I was given a total free hand and I jointly with, with research councils at that time developed a program for industry to update uh, and upskill the senior managers of industry for them to be competitive. Now that was totally new. Okay, now a lot of people are doing it, but at that time uh, we had to break down a lot of barriers within universities and the academic circles and industrial circles for that to take place. Well, initially it had to make it straight away because if it didn't do it, then credibility goes down. You, you must understand, industry at that time was going through a lot of problems. A lot of changes were taking place. Uh, Mrs. Thatcher had come into power. There was this perception that we should privatize the majority of the manufacturing companies were nationalized anyway and they're dependent on life support from government and uh, and that wasn't sustainable because you will never get competitiveness unless you control your man manage your own affairs so there was a transition coming and we were preparing uh, we were skilling the people for that transition and we did that in China as well we did that in other parts of the world as well where we were preparing them for such transitions, you see. As far as R&D is concerned, we don't do anything without companies. And that too uh, was breaking down the barrier because the perception was, well, you know, is, they are doing applied work. Is it the right thing to do? You know, universities should be doing fundamental work, you know, publishing papers, which nobody would read. Now, the job of manufacturing, or engineering for that matter, the job of manufacturing, is to immediately transform uh, the competitiveness of manufacturing industry. Okay, that's our job. Whether it's by developing better products, by developing better processes, different structures, bear this in mind. We moved from automotive to aerospace to health sector, other science-based industries, and one had to do that because that's how globalization is taking place. So sometimes you have to be, uh, you have to have an act of faith, you see. And uh, I still remember uh, doing the turfing ceremony for the Advanced Technology Center with, with the managing director of uh, BL at that time. I was uh, nervous because, you know, there was the building which we have to pay for, you know, I don't know where the money was going to come from, and, and there was a fantastic building. And for the first time, a university was involved in having a technology center for a company where both parties, universities and the companies, can work together in order to improve their competitiveness. If you are credible in a university, and if you, are, if you have to be credible in the outside world, you have to carry out research which is top class. But you also have to carry out research on a wide subject area so that the companies that we, you deal with are partners, whether it's government, whether it's public sector, private sector, can see the benefit of it. Not 25 years from now, not 50 years from now, because the world will change in 25, 50 years. So therefore, majority of the research that we carried out, whether it's in materials, whether it's in cyber science, whether it's in uh, psychology, whether it's in medical sciences, uh, whether it's in horticulture, uh, we have to look at a product afterwards, or a process afterwards. That's fundamentally in our mind. How can our partners gain economic advantage of what we are doing? In other words, impact. We are a broad church, and you have to be a broad church if you have to have students from all over the world working with companies all over the world, if you're going to advise government on what's happening, and if you're going to advise industries on what's going on. So you have to be a broad church, and we are a very broad church.
manufacturing uh, as such has now become globalized, okay? A company that, uh, that may have manufacturing organizations may also have security organizations, may also have digital media companies. So effectively, we are moving away from that to, to the whole area of technological and scientific impact on e economic gain, okay? And uh, so that is, is wide open. I mean, look at some of the work that we are doing in uh, scanning. Look at some of the work that we are doing in uh, the new generation of uh, cars. Look at the work that we are doing in new materials. Look at the work that we are doing in new types of digital media. And look at the work that uh, our professors are working in security. It's a very, very wide group. So we are a center for the university. You know, and anybody in the university, whether undergraduate, postgraduate, or any department can come and work with us. We encourage them and we welcome them. Now we are moving into areas of digital media. I realized about uh, 10 years ago, one of the most important things that has affected industry is digital technology. So I spent a lot of time and researching into looking at what is required in digital technology in the universities. So we set up this digital technology center which spans everything, whether it's digital media, or streaming, or whatever it is that one wants to do. We have recruited key people in key sectors of digital technology, okay, uh, so that they can be the research leaders in their area. And I think that's what universities are there for. The university is recognized by governments. Uh, I mean, of, we, are, we are of all political colors, you see. Mm. Mrs. Thatcher, while she was prime minister, came down here and opened my technology center, and she was very proud. She said, this is the sort of things that was required from universities to work closely with the industry. And, you know, our prime minister, Tony Blair, came here uh, just before the first election, he met with some of our overseas people, you know, politicians and the staff. And then he's been here many times. Uh, we had Gordon Brown launch uh, this digital laboratory. Uh, we have many politicians from all over the world. From, and, and everybody writes in the report, these are, these are the sort of things that countries should do. For the Queen's Award, we are absolutely delighted that we were recognized by the committee and uh, hopefully, you know, and our staff, I mean, that's more important, are delighted that uh, we have been given a Queen's Award. We have got a tremendous alumni who are now running huge companies. We have produced some multi-multi-millionaires and billionaires, you know, by setting up their own companies. And when I go and see them, I'm extremely proud of their success. And I think I'm also extremely proud of the staff that are here, you see. But more than anything else, I'm extremely proud of the University of Warwick, because it's the University of Warwick that has created uh, uh, an environment whereby we could work in the way we work today. This is a world-renowned unit carrying out world research. It has got very, very extensive skill base. And Warwick is very proud of it.